Long before your distinguished president invite me to speak on this day of your days. In, fa in point of fact, as far as the back tender of my childhood, Cinnamon had been vividly impressed upon my memory. Every once in a while, my mind would catch, however faintly, strange from music from long, long ago when my elder brother, fresh from what seemed to be then a wonderful adventure in a world far from home, used to sing that sweet song with so words I can still remember, Cinnamon Besides the Sea. I felt even as a child that there was some strange fascination in that song, for a restless, unyielding urge to go back to Cinnamon seemed to possess and haunt my brother all the time. He studied here in what he must have considered the best years of his life, and he has not quite recovered from the incredible charm and magic of this lively, blessed place. Many years later, that is after the Second World War, your then president, Dr. Arthur Carson, learned that I was going to the United States to pursue graduate studies in law and he very kindly gave me a letter of recommendations addressed to two outstanding universities in America. I would like to let you know, and I have been saying that this many a time, that those letters were given the highest degree of consideration because the schools were considered as a university that possessed the highest traditions of scholarships and excellence. When I learned some three years ago that my former classmate and good friend, Dr. Calderon, accepted the offer to become the president of the university, I was happy for you, for your president and this institution. Convinced as I was, that was an enduring partnership had been forged and that Cinnamon could look ahead for even brighter days in the unending quest of truth and goodness and beauty. I am therefore grateful for the opportunity to be with you and your 63rd anniversary. The journey started by Horace Cinnamon and Dr. and Mrs. David Sutherland Hebard on August 28, 1901 has been in a sense a long, long and tiresome journey where we to call the role of the men and women from the highest officials, from the humblest teachers and the worker who have dedicated their energies, their talents, their hearts, even their very lives to see there's, that the journey is not interrupted so that the quest may not stop, so that the tradition of excellence may go on Against seemingly endless odds and obstacles, without number we would have a fair measure of that kind of quiet heroism that went into making the building of Silma. But in a deeper sense, the journey had not been long, it has not been tiresome. The journey had just begun, and the thrill and wonder of adventures would never end. Sixty years is a long time, but you are still young. For the language of general who has faded away. Youth is not entirely a time of life. It is a state of mind. It is wholly a matter of ripe cheeks, red lips, or suppleness. It is a temper of the will, a quality of the imagination, a vigor of the emotions, a freshness of the springs of life. Nobody grows old by merely living a number of days People grow old only by deserting their ideals. Years may wrinkle the skin, but to give up their interest wrinkles the souls. Worry, doubt, self-distrust, fear, and the despair. They're the long, long wires that bow the head and that turn the growling spirit back to dust. You are as young as your faith, as old as your doubt, as young as your self-confidence, as old as your fear, as young as your hope as old as your despair, and the, in the central place of your heart, there are recording chamber, so long as it receives a message of beauty, hope, cheer, and courage, so long are you young, where the wires are all down, and your heart is covered with the snow of pessimism, and the ice of cynicism, then, and then, only are you grown old. May I take the liberty of reminding you that the capacity of cinnamon to get into the stream of things and contribute 
to the life and spirits of this nation has not been fully tapped. True, it is the form from the ranks of cinema graduates, great leaders have emerged in the field, thought and actions, in the arts and science, in government and in the private enterprise. But we would all be committing a tragic mistake if we were to look back only to the glories of the past and get forget the new challenges of our time. If we were to count in detail its achievements and overlook the massive task that would require you more than just planning and effort, but the vision and the dedication of a lifetime. For when we begin to look around us, we see that amidst the physical reconstructions of towns and cities, the rebuilding of homes and factories and shops there are quite in a serious case of internal breakdown. Building and edifice have gone up, but the edifice that constitutes the real soul of the nation is beginning to shake, and unless every one of us does something about it, the nation, the national structure may collapse and go down.